So, uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for dedicating your Saturday evening to joining us and having a conversation on touring Sri Lanka post-COVID. So, before we start, I want to give a huge shout out to our partner for this webinar, the William Anglis Institute at SLIP. So, we have a small commercial from them right before we start our proceedings. Get a head start in your career in the industries of hospitality, tourism, foods and events at the Colombo Academy of Hospitality Management. Welcome to the Colombo Academy of Hospitality Management here at SLIT, the Sri Lankan Institute of Information Technology. Partnering with the world-renowned William Anglis Institute, Australia, the Academy delivers an advanced diploma in hospitality management. Get your Australian qualification today. Learn what you love and enroll now. Right, so that was our partner for this webinar, the William Anglis Institute at SLIP. So uh, without further ado, I'll just hand over the controls to Dinushka. She's going to be your moderator today. Dinushka. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I have great privilege in introducing our distinguished panel today. Um, we have Dimitri Kure, Manager Operations for Jetwing Hotels. We have Kasun Abesundra from the William Anglis Institute, the commercial that you just saw. We have uh, Champika De Silva, the Area Director Sales for Anantara Peace Haven Tangol and Anantara Kalutara. We have uh, Mr. V. Ravindran, Regional Manager India and Bangladesh for Sri Lankan Airlines. Uh, in the topic today, which is touring Sri Lanka post COVID, uh, we've faced many challenges in the last um, couple of I think the last one year has been especially challenging, but uh, we've faced many challenges in this industry before. And we would like to hear from these professionals on how they plan on moving ahead, working with the new normal that we are all faced with, and uh, hearing their point of view as professionals in the hospitality industry, what the tourism industry holds for Sri Lanka. I would like to start with Dimitri Kure. Hi, Dimitri. Welcome. Hi, Dimitri. Welcome. Um, the first question that I have to ask you is, Jetwing Hotels has been an extremely resilient brand in Sri Lanka. Um, in fact, after the April attacks last year, just a few months later, you opened a fabulous new property and uh, went to the plans and didn't let any of the uh, obstacles deter you in your plan improve the tourism offering for sure. If you could just give us a brief outline on this between theory of how you use resilience as a tool to move forward in this industry. Well, the resilience of Jetwin is something which is not new. It has been by the founder instilled in the organization from the 1970s onwards. Uh, tourism, like everyone knows, is a very volatile and sensitive industry. And there have been many ups and downs from the 1980s onwards with the war and uh, 2004, the tsunami last year and the, this pandemic, which is currently happening. And something that the founders believe was he always kept on, he was very optimistic. And even during the trouble, the uh, during the war, he kept on looking at how he could add value and kept on investing in new properties. Like when the Lighthouse Hotel was built in 1997 when it opened, that the, actually the foundation stone was laid for the hotel the day after the airport bomb was uh, went in Hatuna attack. So, but he always was, he had a belief that there will always be a, a light at the end of the tunnel. And that is something that we have all kept on looking at how, though there are challenges ahead, you have to always be patient. I think patience is a very important uh, element, uh, value that uh, we need in this industry. If you're not patient, then, uh, and if you're looking at a quick solution, then this is probably not the ideal industry because there are so many challenges. This particular incident is unique because before it was only Sri Lanka that was affected. Like if it was the war or the tsunami or last year only Sri Lanka was affected and 
especially last year after the bomb attacks there was a lot of uh, help and encouragement given by the uh, foreign countries the foreign governments are supporting us and many tourists started uh, coming in after a few months now sadly we don't know exactly when the borders will open so we cannot expect a quick return this year like we did previously but we have to be patient uh, ensure that we uh, maintain our properties we have been very blessed with jetpin has been blessed with a very dedicated team of people our senior managers at all the properties during the lockdown they were in the properties with a state and staff to ensure the property was maintained and as a result we were able to within a couple of days after the curfews were lifted open up our properties because uh, the hotels were uh, in all good condition and there was no issues so we have been and since the curfew was lifted in uh, may we have been gradually getting more and more sri lankans and expatriates visiting us and uh, this has uh, helped us as well we are like many others in the industry uh, it has been a very challenging period but being optimistic and having faith that things will improve has helped us to come over this thank you and um, this era that we are in we are facing what we call a new normal and i think there are quite a few procedures that have had to be implemented yes. in making the hotels operational and open to guests could you give us a brief on some of these procedures that the jetwing group has implemented and how has that affected your day to day operation so yeah we have we have followed all the guidelines which have been set by the uh, uh, the medical uh, professionals following some simple things like checking your temperature at the entrance to sanitization but also the cleaning and cleanliness of the rooms doing that it's a bit to ensure that once somebody checks out your the entire rooms are properly clean sanitized the after the crockery all of that so of course those are some things which are standard procedure clean but now due to the new regulations more sent because earlier the sanitization didn't happen like the, uh, having everybody to sanitize your hands at different uh, at the entrance to a restaurant or entrance to a hotel so there are there are difficulties because in our climate it's not also very easy especially most of our properties are resort hotels so it's not very easy for even the staff to be wearing a mask all the time or for for them to be wearing gloves and serve. so there are practical issues in this because unlike in europe where it's a much cooler climate when you're on the beach uh, serving guests and you have to wear a mask the entire day it's, it's a challenge but uh, luckily uh, we have so far we had uh, no issues with how we have handled our processes and uh, most of our properties actually over the weekends have been uh, quite busy with a lot of sri lankans traveling so that has been a real revelation and uh, and uh, most of our hotels we have this you know we have a lot of community projects which we do and one such is the youth development program which we do where we teach uh, underprivileged children uh, hospitality skills and we employ them in return so they they have been also because the advantage is most of these uh, uh, they are all within the vicinity of the properties so even during the lockdown they were able to come in and come and go because they were walking distances so it was that has enabled us to maintain the hotels as well and to ensure that uh, the hotels are in good condition for the uh, for the customers who are visiting us great thank you that actually was i was going to ask you next was about domestic tourism since we are sort of at a standstill when it comes to national tourists uh, what how important right now the domestic market and are there anything that special that you would like to emphasize with regards to creating more uh, domestic tourism well for us we have for all it we have been always a very sri lankan company and we have always treated everybody equally and 
actually even before this on average about 25% of our business is sri lankan business even uh, pre covid or pre uh, easter attack so we have always emphasized on the importance of uh, looking after our own national people and our uh, own countrymen and this has really enabled us and i think it has shown their our loyalty to them and the loyalty our uh, loyal customer base has towards us because actually we have been probably we have been more surprised of the some of our hotels especially in yala for example uh, every weekend for the last 3 4 weeks going up to end uh, early orders every weekend friday saturday is almost uh, 100% occupied and uh, even our other properties four of our properties in nidambo have we have uh, given them out to for as uh, paid quarantine centers but all our other hotels are having a lot of um, sri lankans and expatriates visiting them and we have been and it's our uh, i think the teams who ensure that they look after all of them well and we have been having many actually who have every weekend they have been going to a different property of ours so we are very thankful to them for visiting our properties and and actually i'm today i'm in bengkota and even uh, i was in the evening seeing so many people uh, jet skiing and banana boat so it's nice to see activities happening again and people getting back to uh, enjoying themselves without staying locked up in their homes so it's very encouraging and and i think the government has really done a great job in controlling the spread which has enabled us to slowly get moving so we are i think within this things go like this we can see more and more um, visiting and and uh, hopefully in a couple of months the airport will open as well so and that will bring in uh, foreign tourists but until then we are very happy to with the local clientele and uh, we will look after them uh, very well excellent thank you so much thank you dimitri um i would now like to welcome champika de silva Champika represents the Anantara group here in Sri Lanka and of course has the challenging role of uh, overlooking sales for the group. Uh, Champika, with regards to uh, the approach from an international brand, uh, how have you worked through this lockdown period? Is there anything that you could uh, tell us which would encourage people on how um, the positive aspects that the Anantara group put in place or position during this lockdown. Yep. Thank you, Dinshka, first for inviting me today. Uh, yes, it has been quite an unusual time. I've been in this trade for many, many years. But I think this is the first time that um, in my life also that we came across something which is completely unreal. Uh, so I've been through the war, been through the tsunami, the ones that Dimitri said, I mean, as a young uh, hotelier. So we managed everything quite well. Um, the Easter tax uh, last year uh, was devastating. But then, of course, being an international chain, we had the ability to move our staff uh, around to our different properties and really keep, uh, you know, taking care of them and also not only the staff even our business uh, i managed to send them to different parts to maldives to bangkok we managed to book them elsewhere but this time it's it's uh, completely different uh, so you know the whole world is in it at the same time so i think we learned a good lesson from uh, easter tax and then we sort of knew that we had to have money, you know, cash reserves uh, in, uh, in order to take you through difficult times. So although Easter attack was uh, April, then we had a very good winter, which uh, unfortunately was just December, January and February. And we were looking at a very good March as well when this COVID completely hit us and that we went under lockdown. Um, so what we did was actually we tried to make us ourselves smaller in the sense that uh, you know uh, take our expenses right down and we 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 didn't close sanantara tangal we had it open right throughout so to say because we had some guests who stayed with us and they stayed through the lockdown with us and if you wanted to be stuck in some part of the world i think that was one of the best places and they did prove it uh, there were there were some um, foreigners with us who posted beautiful pictures celebrating their birthdays enjoying themselves in tango so it was very nice uh, so we had the hotel running with a very very small staff 
uh, we sent the others all back to their homes and we spent the lockdown, you know, uh, just looking after a couple of them that were there. And even at Anantara Kalutara, we had um, two guests and then they stayed on through the, through the lockdown. But we did open the two resorts again for bookings from 1st of June. And um, like Dimitri said, now we have to um, manage with the local clientele. Um, unlike um, them, you know, we, we had a local clientele, uh, but we had, uh, when you compared the prices, uh, I think we are at a, a slightly higher price point. So I think when you have such nice offerings in Sri Lanka, and then you had to work alongside them, but we do have our loyal customers, and then we've been able to have them back with us, and it's been good. But uh, through COVID, our main um, our focus was to look after our staff because um, when you have uh, experts in different areas and skilled staff, uh, you can't uh, lose them and then you can't suddenly start uh, coming back to normal and then start again back at zero because you, you have to have your staff. So we had to look at um, ways of looking after the team. Uh, and also managing the cash. So um, it's, it's, it's a matter of really focusing on what is important and what is not. So um, uh, we actually closed Awani, uh, which also the, comes under the minor hotels group in Sri Lanka, but we opened it today. And I'm happy to say this weekend, we are open with 50% occupancy in Awani Kalutara. So, which is also quite good. But uh, the main lessons uh, were that we had to um, trim the fat and focus on what is important and, and uh, keep the staff um, involved in what we were doing. Uh, we started actually planning for uh, post-COVID operations from uh, very far back, from about March. And uh, being an international brand, they put, a, uh, they put a COVID protocol across the brand. So at the different brands, uh, the minor hotels have different brands. So Anantara and Avani are the brands that we can see in Sri Lanka, but there are many more. But for both, for Anantara and for Awani right now, we have a, a standard set, a brand standard. But then on top of that, we work alongside the local health authorities to make sure that we comply uh, with that. So um, unlike East Attacks, as I said, Dinushka, because we had that opportunity to uh, get our people across to different places and we had the backing of the rest of the brand, yeah, they were doing well. It was just Sri Lankan thing. And then, you know, they supported us fully to uh, get back up fast, you know, using the brand strength. But right now, uh, we're all on our own. So we all have to start uh, uh, focusing on what will get us up and about. So right now, uh, we are focusing on staff training and, uh, you know, in making the locals enjoy our facilities They've had that opportunity to come into our properties and see what we do. And um, so that's what we're doing for now. And Thanks. that's, uh, yeah, sorry. Um, and also, um, what is the message that you would like to communicate to people who are still apprehensive about traveling or going on holidays or checking into places where there are a number of people because while it is uh, very much under control in Sri Lanka right now, there is still the possibility of um, those who are a little nervous about venturing out. What is the message that you could send to them? Or how would you reassure them that it is, um, everything is in place and everything is safe enough for those people to travel? Yeah, one big thing that would be is how Sri Lanka as a country handled the COVID situation. So like Dimitri said, I mean, we've done so well as a small country and, you know, being able to manage the community spread and to, you know, be where we are today to be able to venture out and slowly have people coming into our hotels. So that is an example. And I think uh, we speak about that in, uh, now. We've been constantly in touch with our partners, although although we are not uh, seeing visitors to Sri Lanka, we use our GSOs in different parts of the world and we reach all our partners and then we educate them on Sri Lanka. So uh, I actually did a podcast for a big surf operator last week where very confidently I explained to them that we were opening the borders in, in August and that, you know, the, and the protocol in place. 
that that's what that's what impresses them and they were like okay you've got a very good system in place because even when i told them okay we are opening in august i said okay these are the things in place when you come into the airport you come with a mm, covid certificate and if you don't have it then we do it and this is what we're going to charge and then each uh, hotel or, or um, each area even the the places of interest they they have all been set with standards to um, to really adhere to so i think uh, we will continue to communicate this to uh, uh, partners around the world using the strength and using the reach into different markets so um, uh, for anantara our protocol is very very um, very good and very very uh, detailed so we have been investing in in uv lights to uv uh, sterilization box to air sterilizers you know those are all used and then we are training our staff um, it's ongoing right now on on the protocol on how they do it you know how how they prepare the room before the guests come in to how they have uh, the cutlery all personally sanitized you know packed in personal packs in the restaurants to um, we have qr codes as menus where uh you 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 scan it on your telephone and then you know you see your menu so there are no menus being handled so very detailed very very um you know sort of state of the art can i say that no but okay but we've invested on on uh, non contact you know sterilization units so from the entrance to the restaurants to all the places of activities you have sterilization units that are without any contact and then the guests are checked in through uh, using an ipad all they are you know the way if they are using our vehicles we use the air sterilizer to sterilize it and then we have a little note in the car saying your car has been sterilized at this time at this point and also uh, they have their you know charger cables and all that packed in separate uh, cases so that you know once it's done then it's sterilized and put back in into another unit so little things but then of course we will communicate these to people so if they're going to come back i think uh, the market Uh, who have uh, disposable income even at this time of economic downturn would be the first to venture out i think the airline costs uh, will also have to be manageable so I, i i can't yet predict on what the airline costs would be i just know that it's going to be more expensive than what it was before and then the airlines also will not i think uh, remove seats because they have cost to manage so when people come in i think just that the fact that we tell them these are the this is the protocol in place and this is how the hotels will manage and this is these are the places and also government has taken a step i think to register uh, all accommodation and and sort of certify them saying these are the covid certified uh, uh, hotels that you can book so which itself is a very good point so as i said we will use our reach and we will use our contact base across not just to promote our brand or uh, but everything about sri lanka because we, we it's all about the country so you know one hotel or two hotels cannot manage just uh, saying come to us so we will continue to talk about everything that we do uh, yeah, with the government as well as individually by the brand and um, spread it around the world excellent thank you so much shamika uh, also i know uh, today it's very hard to predict or talk about plans because everything seems to be evolving constantly what we plan today can be changed tomorrow and even procedures and uh, dates of opening the airport and all that is uh, it can it's always changing but is there anything in particular that you have in place for the next two months because we are aware that uh, the month of july and probably some part of august we will still not be able to welcome foreign tourists to the country so is there anything that you have in place in particular for the next couple of months do you have anything planned in place that you could share with us the next couple of months is all about keeping our nose above the water you know that's about all about looking after our local guests and we put out some very interesting um, uh, offers because um, with our products it's all about experiences and it's all about activities so when dimitri said about banana boating and uh, uh, all those jet skis you know kalutara has an activity tower with a zip line so i see them enjoying themselves and it's lovely to see people and i think they i think they're making 
more revenue on the activity tower actually because locals love uh, doing things you know they don't like just going into a hotel and sitting in a room they love to go out venture out and do things so at both uh, all three resorts we are very fortunate to have a lot of activities that can keep the locals occupied so we are focusing on the local market but in anticipation of the airport opening in august we had done some work with the markets that we thought were going to be able to travel uh, but for now it's all about uh, you know not incurring any extra additional costs that would you know it, it's for us to stay longer you know we have to stretch the limited uh, resources to survive long so that's the focus right now and the staff are on in training and they're back in the resorts so they are also again getting a feel of having a resort full of guests because we have been fortunate again as i said with the local clientele so they are getting used to um, practicing the covid protocol uh, yeah it is difficult to wear a mask and walk out so they, they are doing it and then but then they have to do it so if we, if we are to get um, you know successfully um, come out of this i think we need to do that at, at least for a while till till the situation eases so actually we are uh, i feel like um, i i am borrowing this quote from a famous uh, hotelier like a fighter pilot in a, in a, in a jet traveling at three times uh, uh, the speed of sound and then having to take decisions <laughs> you know because you don't know what's around the corner so we we have put all contingencies uh, plans in place so because you don't know you, you just don't know what is what to expect and then so as long as you have contingency plans in place and while you hope for the best but you have the worst case scenario at the back of your head and then you have a plan so yeah we are hoping for the best and we are we are we are we are trying to stay with our nose just above water till till things are back to normal and hopefully yeah it will be soon great thank you so much uh, this question is for dimitri and champika both uh, just i know again this is something that could change tomorrow what you say today might change tomorrow but in your opinion um, what are the markets that you perceive would be the first to maybe bounce back and return to sri lanka from our international tourists we know that uh, our top 3 which is india china and the uk have been badly affected by this pandemic uh, so taking that into consideration um, this is again it's just today and this could change tomorrow so it's just just for people out there to kind of have an idea of what you think would be um, some of the markets that would be resilient enough to come make that uh, make sri lanka top of mind recall for them to visit Uh, Dimitri or Champika, but, but I would like both to answer so you can decide who goes first. Should I go Champika, first? Uh, yeah, you go first. Right? <laughs> so my feel was that Germany, Germany would uh, come back because Germany handled this quite well, and they were getting um, the COVID, uh, you know, the spread under control pretty well. But then, unfortunately, they started a second wave recently, and then I, I'm not very sure. of how long they will take because they started traveling internally so i am in touch with our german uh, gso on a daily basis and we were really hopeful of uh, germany opening its doors to us and that you know and them being able to travel because they were traveling they are traveling in europe so i think they have stopped it now but i'm not very sure of what what is going on right now because everything is such a you know very hazy so then there is russia because the russians are just wait into travel so i just did a um, webinar with them last week and then the agents are all looking forward to getting the people into our country and and they are willing to travel and also they are already questioning us about the winter in case things are back to normal you know can we come how many rooms do you know so it's it's quite nice at this point in time to feel that there are people who want to come and that they still want to you know visit us and of course japan as you know didn't have uh, uh they had no problem with sri lanka they opened it saying okay you could go down to sri lanka without any problem and russia yesterday actually in the countries that they will allow people to come sri lanka is at number 4 so which is which is really great because they have very high spending guests and they come and stay long 
and then you know i think staying long also helps us manage the covid situation because they're going to come in and stay one or two weeks in one place you can easily you know have some uh, way of uh, looking after them and making sure that you know infectious people are not uh, within them and that you know it's so i feel um, russia and germany would be among one of the first i mean will be among the first countries that will travel uk is looking you know with the spread not being under control they one of the agents told me they were a couple of months behind you know in terms of getting the uh, the pandemic under control so I'm not very sure if they'll be able to travel in the near future and of course australia closed us down again and they anyway stopped uh, international travel to 2021 so as you said it's very uncertain uh, future ahead uh but the uh, trick is to be stay prepared and and to anticipate and to be able to predict much in advance uh, by closely monitoring uh, what's going on in each area so dimitri i'll leave it to you to tell uh, you know add a bit on that yeah that like you said uh, what we need to work is with countries that are also uh, controlling the spread of the virus like sri lanka Yeah, people are talking about travel bubbles. So having relationships with, if we, even if you look at uh, some of the Southeast Asian countries like Vietnam, Thailand, um, and Japan, for example, they have controlled the uh, spread of the virus very well. So our government also should, I do, uh, if we can come to bilateral agreements with them, where there are direct flights from that country to us, and uh, vice versa. Uh, There, those type of countries will be the first to move because, unfortunately, our two main markets in China and India still, especially India, is uh, unfortunately badly affected at the moment. So that will take some time to settle down. With such a large population, it's not easy to uh, control a pandemic of this nature. So coming to bilateral agreements with countries who have control this. Uh, the spread of the virus will will be uh, really important like you said anything can change no, i just got a message on other there are saying that uh, the admiral colombia has just said that uh, they'll be putting a stop to the flights coming in from uh, the sri lankans uh, who are coming from other countries till further notice so so i think today there were two flights which landed one from uh, england and one from australia but i think now so it's very uncertain so you can't really predict uh, anything more than probably 24 to 48 hours so things keep changing and you just need to be resilient and uh, keep on adapting to the situation so anybody is just at the moment where you can find your strength from thank you and just thank you dimitri just like the present situation in the country even my floor who I was going to speak to next is changing because on uh, trying to keep the flow going as you mentioned uh, the travel bubbles and the travel corridors um i would like to introduce uh, mr ravindran to the uh, to answer a couple of questions on behalf of sri lankan airlines i think you are overlooking a very critical market for us which is india and um, as mentioned by dimitri and champika india was one of our absolute number one primary markets and that has been affected really badly um does sri lankan airlines have anything in place with regards to the travel corridors are there any plans to uh, work on work with uh, the countries that have sort of got this situation under control they may not have been on your regular um, route map but is there a possibility of looking at direct flights from any of these destinations which are relatively uh, covid free at the moment uh yes and also uh, so the answer is no at the moment uh, because uh, uh, it's 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 mainly depending on the on the safety of the our passengers and uh, the perception towards the uh, the tourists who are coming into our country now uh, as dimitri and uh, uh, champika said this was uh, an unprecedented situation because most of the time any incident uh, what we have uh, experienced so far would have been an opportunity for the another country or another party but this was the first time that everybody has been affected uh, with the same thing 
but uh, still i mean the airline i mean sri lankan airlines especially that we don't have the luxury of at least uh, getting some kind of a consolations like the hoteliers are enjoying with the domestic tourism i mean rather the locals basically and sri lanka is small so you know our domestic travel is not that great for us to exploit that too uh, to answer your question yes even now that we are ready to just to operate to the, uh, the countries which are uh, fairly safe uh, but uh, i think we all know that um, the airline operation is depending on a lot of logistics which is beyond the airline itself so we have to depends on uh, say the, the countries uh, the stakeholders like the immigration the health authorities or, or you would say the ground handlers so and so forth so in that perspective yes we are ready to operate because we are so desperate in in that perspective because uh, Uh, I mean, all all the industry, especially the aviation industry, has been badly hit, and our cash flows were, uh, I mean, very very you know sensitive situations. And uh, but still, that you know we are just you know pulling through for the last few months, and it was a great uh, effort by the entire management, and also we are thankful to the government also for us to support in that perspective. So if there are uh, countries which are safe, and if our airport you know decided to up, I mean the open. so we will definitely but we might be able to operate uh, as you said there is some new destination which are covid free and uh, yes we would and uh, uh, as our number one source market is india to sri lanka and even uh, for sri lankan airlines also india is a very very uh, significant uh, uh, revenue generating destinations uh, and we are operating 11 destination in india so we have to relook at our uh, plan because uh, soon after the i mean i mean if, if when when we just resumes operation our focus would be more towards uh, fit leisure and uh, it should be focused to uh, sri lanka i mean the point to point traffic but if you just take as an airline that you know we were enjoying about 60 to 65% it's a, it's a beyond traffic and we were enjoying even just to maximum of 40% to the point to point because uh, our network is so uh, depending on between uh, Uh, two destinations i mean uh, uh, being in a sri lanka being a hub so to answer your question yes we will we will uh, 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 operate to those places which are safe and we can bring passengers and our government and our airport authorities allow to uh, uh, those travelers to come in and also if if new points which are which are not at our route map at the moment we will definitely look into the, those things also so now one was that we were contemplating about this germany but uh, as you rightly said you know there are some concerns because of the second wave and even russia was that we used to operate those days but still that we have not thought about it and uh, there are some other uh, points also uh, that we were uh, basically that you know we are doing some you know ground work And I'm, I'm, it's not an appropriate platform, and also it's uh, I may not be able to just to share because it was not still finalized and it was not uh, made it public. So yes, we will just uh, plan to operate to some destination which we were not used to, which are COVID free. We will just do. Did I answer your question, uh, Dinuksha? Yes, yes, you did. Thank you so much. That's great to know. And as long as we know that there is um, hope that there will be the option of looking at new destinations. Uh, to bring in the tourists that's that's a great consolation and we'll just continue with you if that's okay and i'll come back yeah, yeah. in a couple of minutes uh, with regards to the restriction with pass- uh, passenger travel but you've been still very active with your repatriation flights and cargo operation yes yeah. is there um, anything that you would hope for in the long term as uh, a lifeline that could be given to the airline from the government is there anything that uh, would be <laughs> that you okay. could mention as of now okay it's a bit of a tough and a sensitive question but anyway it's appropriate that you know you ask this question uh, you know we being a, a fully owned by government but yet we are a private uh, organization so we, we may not be able to uh, compared or will be will be considered as like you know a, a department or a, or a, or a, say or authority or a corporation in that perspective uh, we have to just to find our own uh, what you call uh, our 
cash flows and all that which is a business organization so uh, we we as much as we can we will try to just to uh, find our own own uh, to call finance and uh, uh, the lifeline as you said but since that you know the owners are government i think we always that you know we can look for them look out for them and they 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 used to help and they they always help uh, but you know in in my 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 capacity and uh, i may not be able to just to divulge in in what in what terms and what are the uh, lines that they used to do and also oh, I, I would i would uh, rather uh, reserve certain comments in that but uh, definitely being uh, the owner i mean the i mean it will affect the the ownership and also uh, airline being the, the significant contributor to the tourism and it's a, uh, it's a, what do you call it without the airline or the national carrier it will be difficult to just to run the tourism industry and uh, being that 12 to 13 percent of the gdp is coming from tourism sri lankan airlines being a pivotal role on that so yes so uh, so far that you know we were uh, we were pulling through and uh, government also helping in uh, in times that we wanted and uh, as you rightly said, we are at the moment we are concentrating on the repatriations and uh, especially the cargo. Uh, but uh, fortunately, unfortunately, uh, at the time that we were starting uh, cargo operation, it was very lucrative. But now it has been turned into very, very competitive because all the airlines have, uh, I mean, came into the picture. So now it's, it's going to be not easy as that we used to do about uh, three, four months back. Uh, repatriation again, it's a challenge and uh, Yes, because now we, we have to just do it. It's not a commercial operation. Basically, that we have to make sure that we have to cover the cost. We have to pay our leases. Uh, and also, it's going, you know, one way. It's ferry. And uh, we have to just to cover the cost. And we, we can't afford to just to operate even at a loss. And, uh, you know, sometimes the people have lost their jobs. And uh, they can't sometimes, you know, pay the, pay the cost that what we have just imposed on them. But nevertheless, that we, we managed to just to run a lot of successful repatriation in that perspective. And we even operated to so many places that we never used to operate. Uh, but again, uh, with, the, with the current scenario of uh, that we are, that most of the COVID passengers are imported cases. So, and also there are overwhelming facilities. I mean, the facilities are overwhelming in the, uh, what you call, uh, the quarantine uh, places so that you know they have just you know, temporarily suspended so yes that uh, government is helping and also we have to just to find our own stance uh, to just to run through thank you and also your last question is on the opening of the airport uh, i think there were plans and everyone was very hopeful with the uh, date given which was august 1st and now it has been pushed back of course for good reason as uh, health and safety is key and number one. Uh, has this affected any plans the airline had to recommence operations? Of course, yes, because now, say, even our, our airport was open, but only that we can't bring passengers into the country. So it is as good as the airport is closed. So we can carry transit passengers. But unfortunately, the points which we are operating, but say, for example, say, UK and say, Australia, or certain places that you know we don't have enough passengers who are traveling out of Sri Lanka and in the same way we don't allow any any passengers to disembark in Sri Lanka unless otherwise it has been approved by the uh, the, the government authorities so uh, we have the plans to uh, start our operations from 1st of August at least at a smaller scale like uh, I would say uh, uh, with a reduced frequency especially to India because we used to operate three flights a day to Delhi, but still we had a plan to operate uh, with one flight just to start with, and certain places twice a week, twice a week, depending on the demand. Uh, but uh, as you rightly said, that uh, maybe with the valid reason that they have uh, not uh, very much, what you call, uh, looking forward to open by the 1st of August. So we also have cancelled our flights temporarily till 15th of August. So if they, if it is all depends on the airport readiness and the, and the, and the country readiness to welcome passengers. Even for example, Sri Lankans can't come to Sri Lanka unless otherwise if the approval is given by the uh, ministry authorities. I mean, it's all for good reasons because we can't blame anybody for that. When, so just say that you know we all stuck in India. You know, India is becoming very vulnerable. It's almost cost uh, I mean, eight hundred thousand uh, COVID patients. 
and our our three very lucrative markets like uh, Maharashtra, Mumbai, and say Delhi, and uh, for, I mean, Tamil Nadu, which is Chennai, are the first uh, three for highest numbers or 60 percent of the total COVID passengers are from these three uh, what you call uh, states or the other cities. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That is very enlightening, and I think we do have hope. That, uh, Life is full of hope. <laughs> I think in the tourism industry, I, that, that's an absolute prerequisite to have hope. <laughs> uh, thank you. And we'd like to move on to Kasun. Kasun, I think um, you're uh, welcome. And um, you have also something Hi, quite... Minister. Hi, uh, Something quite challenging, and that is to um, convince people to remain uh, positive about job security and the future in the hospitality industry. William Anglis, um, they are absolutely world-renowned for excellent um, hospitality training. So do you see any challenges? Are you facing any challenges at the moment with regards to your present students and how they are perceiving their future as they leave your institution and head into the real world of joining the hotel industry or the hospitality industry? Uh, answer to your question, Dinushka, I would say it's yes and no. So I'll start with yes, then I'll go to no. Right, uh, this morning, when I spoke to one student and he was saying uh, during the quarantine period, he got an opportunity to uh, read uh, so much of books, you know? so. In the industry of this nature, we need people who are with uh, uh, competency. They should have knowledge, skills, and attitude all three. Because if all three are not in place, we, we are going in, in a different direction. So uh, what I see in local industry in Sri Lanka, we really miss people who are, who are having a lot of knowledge component in the uh, hospitality industry per se. Because it's an industry, it's a very vibrant industry where you get so many things to learn. It's not just uh, hoteliering. It talks about uh, um, uh, tea culture, coffee culture, beverage. You know, it's vast. You know, in the industry of this nature, the knowledge factor what matters. Then the skills, your skill set, uh, your how you how you perceive how you perceive your skills and how you serve your customer. That's all what matters. Uh, taking from Champika's hotel, I like your quotation. Uh, life is a journey. Uh, we have added something else. Uh, life is a journey, but hospitality is not job. It's a it's a passion. It's a passion. It's it's a passion. So you can't you can't call our job as uh, just for for jobs, including all areas like uh, tra travel, tourism, and hospitality. We do a passion. So we are here to uh, bring smile to our customers. You know, uh, to bring our uh, smile to uh, their. Uh, happiness. So we create their memories or experience in this uh, endeavor. So, so going back to the same question again, sir, the answering uh, question, yes, because it's very nice to see that these young kids, uh, they are they are very very much positive about the the, the COVID, and they say things will be all right in future. And one one said, we we are completely blank now. The things will be different in future. So, I mean, it's very interesting to hear from them. And uh, other uh, very uh, interesting point that we, we, we came across, when we do uh, online classes, we got 100% attendance. We got 100% attendance. Not like uh, doing a physical classroom. When you, when you get physical classroom, sometimes we, we have uh, 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 5 to 10% uh, absentees. But the online classroom, all are there. And then when I said last, when we said, when all, all uh, faculty members, we said, we wanted to see you all next week. Yes, sir, we would like to come to campus because we want to see this, uh, our, our environment. So that's very, very interesting because this uh, generation, uh, Y, that's the next gen for us. The, they are all tech savvy, but they still believe this physical, physical evidences and physical aspect of this industry, right? So. That's the yes part of it. Then we go to the answer, no. Uh, yes, they find it difficulty with the financial, financial aspect. So that's the uh, 
the main thing but uh, but that that itself creates a lot of uh, a lot of agony so so uh, that uh, that of course as an institute or as an industry we cannot help because we still have to be hopeful of what we are what we are doing and what what is happening in the future yeah so and also your trust they, they need to create their own credibility and the the trust that's where this is a good time for all of us to establish a character establish a character and also to demonstrate everyone's competency and being sri lankan we are very famous for hospitality we have a smile and we work with people and we are very uh, people oriented people it's nice we all to create all of us get together to create um other authentic brand ambassadors it's not just tourism industry it's not just a hospitality industry it's not just travel industry we all sit together we try to create this uh, authentic brand ambassadors we all are brand ambassadors in india not not only uh, the people who are working in the industry even people who are uh, out, outside the industry whoever who comes to sri lanka whoever who talks to the other uh, guests we we the, the brand ambassadors of uh, sri lanka because sri lanka is called as a paradise it's a paradise right so we are blessed to have in this country so so on top of that we are uh, we are the best people to serve another people right so that's why the, we have to keep this no factor away but we'll have to be uh, 100% focus on the yes factor because coming from younger generation it's very 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 uh, important or rather to hear their voices uh, recently we started a, a very good uh, project called um, the talk show with our alumni right so they are talking about very positive things and one said don't never never give up go for it go for it i love my passion some day it will be all right for me right see i mean listening from this young generation we have something to get, get it out of it and we can uh, uh, deliberately give it to the uh, uh, the other people right Thanks have so i answered your question yes for sure and yeah. i think like you said uh, they have to be passionate about it i think all of us today on this panel it's like almost it's in our dna where no matter what we still stay strong and positive about being in this industry and about the mindset as you know there are so many options today that uh, young people are um, they have available to them and how would you or what would you say to someone if they are looking at maybe an education in the hospitality industry why would you convince them that it's absolutely an excellent line to go down or you would feel that they would succeed especially at a time like this when i think our industry has been affected the most while all industries are affected i think tourism has been the worst affected how easy or how difficult is it to convince someone that they should continue to pursue uh, the education in hospitality uh again three areas one is uh, the 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 self control right we need to train people or we need to allow people to come up from their from their discipline that's one very 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 interesting fact because we have to find people who are very much disciplined in it and and in in the context of this and we have to we will have to tell them you have to be patient for a while so that's the one answer that be patient for a while and the second answer is uh, uh, is to keep them give them the show and and show them the perks of this industry because this is a industry where you get everything right you get everything it's not just uh, working you get traveling you get uh, excellent food your laundry is being uh, you uh, given everything has been given because when we started uh, at the very initial stages what we saw the lucrative aspect of it fair enough that we have longer hours to work and those things are different different uh, aspects but the lucrative part so that's very fascinating and uh, the look at the international brands are coming up to sri lanka and it's it's amazing um, last week champika uh, i was in your hotel kalukar uh, uh, and uh, because i was very 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 much enthusiastic with them how they serve you know that's uh, 
that's what we have to uh, showcase to people it's not just uh, just um, you know just negative aspect of again uh, the lucrative aspect of the industry so that's that's ex- that's that's a that's an excellent aspect uh, the the third third point is the 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 qualified graduates qualified graduates or the educated employees so the during during our time when we join in the industry the hotel school is the only avenue that we all got to go to study tourism uh, uh, study program now uh, being uh, william english and all other some other institutes are also doing uh, uh, avenues but educated graduates or rather the best or the best product we'll have to get uh, we'll have to give the avenues to uh, everyone to come in so education is must because every other industry is being graded and everyone will get uh, degrees and everyone will get uh, uh, masters why not hospitality hospitality is also the the uh, the best uh, stream to learn and i'm very privileged to see uh, the William and these kids because not just that i'm working for them and working with them and it's uh, they are that's not the that is not the the selected crowd or they, they not because of they don't have they don't have any other option they are not coming to english because that's the prime objective they said we want to join we want to join william and these to get this qualification right so because the qualification is what matters it's not just uh, just uh, personality but back then yes it's it's graded as you know hospitality industry is graded as it's a layman's job but that's not what it is now but you need to have qualified graduates qualified uh, hoteliers qualified professionals qualified travel uh, uh, personnel do you, uh, after covid i'm sure we will be able to get along with them excellent thank you so much um i leave it open to the panelists there's anything that anyone would like to add before we um i'm not sure if uh, we would is there anything that anyone would like to add before we you got to start the lesson now right you can see the screen can you see the screen yeah so right uh, the last week we were talking about the entire hospitality industry now, now here today we are going to talk about we can't hear anything i think we lost i hasun had a bit of a technical issue sure yes uh, give a few more seconds let's see can... so we chop chop it and you want to show a video right uh, i just wanted to show what we do as a protocol for yeah, yeah. you know tara so it should have been just showcase how we how we communicate that is what i want to do then i'm just sending a message to uh, ask them to air that video give me a second just a second. all right
Thank you. And I think uh, there is another clip. Am I right, Kasum? We have a quick clip. Is that yes, right? yes, yes. Good day to all. I am the Centre Director here at the William Angus Institute at SLIT and I have put together a very important safety message which will be delivered to you through my staff who I have entrusted with utmost confidence. Wherever we are, whatever you do, you need to be safe at all times in any workplace. There can be potential hazards and threats. However, all we want to do is to keep you safe and secure at all times while you are with us. Follow the safety protocols and procedures in order to support us in ensuring a protective environment for everyone. Your safety is our main priority so that you will be comfortable and focused at all times. This is a message from the Centre Director, Mr. Stephen Brady Miles, and the Safety Committee. Um, I think we've got a couple of questions from some of our viewers. Um, I think one probably uh, Ravindran would have to answer, one for Kasum and another one for Dimitri and Shatika to answer. Uh, the first question, is there a timeline as such that travel will resume from uh, foreign countries? Uh, Dimitri, do you would like to answer that? Is there any particular timeline in place where you would see international tourists coming to Sri Lanka? In your opinion, what is the best guess right now? Well, I think the way we see it as uh, so Queen, we are hopeful to, even if the airport opens say in August or September, we may not see many coming immediately. But towards the latter part of the year, towards the winter time, and I think like Champit also mentioned earlier, we might have people who come and stay longer, especially Europeans might come and stay for a few months uh, because uh, I think they might come for wellness purposes, Ayurvedic treatment and stay for a month or two. Uh, so we might start seeing people coming in probably from October, November, of course, is all depending on what the next few months uh, have in place. But uh, it, yeah, I think we are, we are hoping if the airport opens a few months after that, there will be a inflow and hopefully people might come during the uh, winter months and stay longer because there might be special, uh, special promotions done and so on. So that might be a start. Uh, there is one more for you, Dimitri, uh, particularly for the Jetwing Hotels group. Uh, are all the hotels open? at present for holiday makers and uh, barring the ones that are for the quarantine. Uh, are all the hotels open? So actually all our hotels other than one hotel, which we actually, that's a managed property of ours in Big Bella called Underneath the Mandatory. All the other hotels other than the four in Nigambo, which are used for as quarantine centers, all other hotels have been open uh, since uh, middle of, uh, towards the end of May. And we have been getting uh, both Sri Lankans and expatriates uh, visiting. And some destinations have been very popular, like I mentioned earlier, Yala, uh, Sigiriya, Dambul and places. Of course, there are a lot of special offers, not only offered by us, but uh, pretty much all, all the hoteliers. So there are a lot of, uh, and many Sri Lankans over the weekends are traveling. And, Maybe once the school holidays come in place towards, in the, towards orders, there might be uh, more, uh, more people traveling during the week as well, taking a few days off. And I think especially some of the people that don't Yala during the week have been very fortunate because uh, they have been only on like 10 jeeps and they have had brilliant sightings of uh, leopards and bears. Whereas the weekends are a bit crowded, but if you travel during the week, you can 
pretty much have spent an hour with no disturbance. So it's a completely change to the normal Yala safari where you have. So there are always ups and positives as well. So you maintain the focus on the positives and not worry too much about the negative sides. For sure. For sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the question for Ravindra, it is um, even with COVID not being completely eradicated, is there a possibility that flights will resume by the end of August, even if it is not completely eradicated? Chances are very remote because it's totally depending on the on the safety measures because we can't compromise with that. So uh, I'm sure that uh, no, it won't. Thank you. And uh, Kakasun, what are the qualifications required to get into the hospitality industry? Uh, you mean to say our institute or in general? I'm not too sure. The question just says, what are the qualifications required to get into the hospitality industry? So maybe yeah. if you could just give us a brief on what is required to join uh, William Anglis and yeah. what do you receive yeah. when you graduate? Yeah, so uh, to join William Anglis, uh, we have uh, four different courses. One is hospitality management, event management, commercial cookery. Recently, we started the patisserie. So all courses, we, we, we need to have O levels, right, for them to get into the courses. Also, we are going to implement another course called Certificate 2, which is coming again from Australia. Those who have done their, you know, O levels and there's a little grace period until they get results so they can also join that and we are planning to have another courses uh, to the industry to you know uh, specialized courses we started one with the coffee and we want to start with another one with uh, beverage and bar operation so industry aspect is like that so that will be uh, uh, discussed in, in later on so these are, this is how it is being structured right now. Okay. Thank you. And there's another quick question. Where is the William Anglis Institute located? We are situated at Slit, Malabe campus, uh, uh, Sri Lanka Institute of Information Technology. We are in the campus itself. We have the campus environment. It's, uh, it's again, it's like a, a foreign university in Sri Lanka. Great, thank you. And last question for Champika. As an international brand, what extra measures are taken by the Anantara group? I think you mentioned almost all of it, but if there's anything that's extra, you can. I think the trick is to reset and adjust uh, expectations around all, all scenarios. So that's what we are planning and doing because uh, it's a very um, unknown thing for all of us, not just local, international or whatever, it's for everyone. So as I said, we have the best case scenario and then we have the worst case scenario also as a plan A and B or B and A or whatever the way you want, but you have all contingencies in place. So the best example was, as I said, I was very impressed with this thing about the fighter pilot, you know, <laughs> going at three times the speed of sound and then having to take real decisions. Uh, it, it's as bad as that right now. And also from the same uh, general manager, I also got a very nice thought again, said the hospitality industry is like a tree and the tree is having a little bit of trouble now. So we have to look after it, give it a little bit of sun, give it a little bit of water and look after it. And soon we will have fruits again. And then so right now we're taking care of the tree, looking after our people, looking after the cars, uh, planning ahead and uh, keeping uh, everybody going till, till times are better. And as I think Dimitri said, patience. Yes. Key um, attribute that all of us in the hospitality industry is while being resilient, we have to have a great deal of patience. So, uh, thank you so much. Thank you to everyone for taking time off of your weekend to be with us and give our listeners and viewers an idea of what the industry is doing at the moment and where we stand and where we hope to be. I'll give it over to Karani if you'd like to do something in closing. Maybe not. Um, 
So uh, once again, thank you so much for joining us. And um, we hope that the future is going to be extremely bright for us as it has been. And history has clearly shown us that no matter how tough our situations have been, we have been able to come out of it and come out stronger and better. Sri Lanka was promoted as the number one destination recently, very recently. And I'm sure we would revert to that and having an awesome, uh, positive uh, thought process will definitely help all of us forward. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.